There are 10 different death animations in Super Mario Odyssey. One for falling in poison, one for dying to an enemy, one for freezing to death, one for burning to death, one for dying in a 2D area, one for sinking in quicksand, one for getting squished, one for falling into the void, one for drowning, and one for dying to an enemy underwater. Now it's usually really sad whenever you die in a video game. But in this official speedrun category, the whole entire point is to die. For this speedrun, you need to use an already completed file and then die in all 10 ways as quickly as possible. It doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you die with every single animation once. Now the world record for this speedrun is 3 minutes and 35 seconds, and I wanted to see how good I could do. And my ultimate goal was to get under 4 minutes. But anyways, let's get into the speedrunning. Lucky for me, this game is 6 years old, so I don't actually have to figure out any routing or discover any strategies. I just have to take the pre-existing things people have discovered and optimize it those so that I could achieve a good time. In order to learn this speedrun, I just decided to learn from the best. So I watched the world record speedrun two times, and then I went and practiced the run myself. And after the practice run, I decided to do my first official speedrun. Also, if you want to see the world record run, I'll put the link in the description. Before the run, you need to start at Metro Kingdom, so that you can take this painting right to Sand Kingdom. And the timer doesn't start until the screen fades black and you are almost through the painting. After you exit the painting, you are right next to Jashki, so you want to hop on him and then ride him over to the poison, then jump off and die. This poison death is the first death animation. Then you respawn back at the painting. You want to take Jaxi and ride over to these cactuses, or cacti, or whatever you want to call them, I don't care. Anyways, you're going to hop off the Jaxi and take damage. Then you want to take damage from this cactus, and then enter the pipe. Then you want to quickly roll and die from this gushin, which is the second death animation. Now, you might be wondering, why don't we just enter the pipe right away and die to the gushin instead of taking damage from the plants and then dying to the gushin. Well, that's because after you take damage, you get several seconds of invincibility frames where you are unable to take more damage until you wait for a while. But because this cactus is closer to the jaxi than the pipe is, you want to get hit by it, and then while you are invincible, you want to make your way to the other cactus, so you take damage right when your invincibility wears off. Then when you enter the pipe, you get rid of the invincibility frames so that you can die right away to the gushin. After the gushin death, you want to get hit twice by the gushin, and then stand in the water until you freeze. By standing still in freezing water, you eventually freeze to death, and that's the third death animation. After that, you want to run into the gushin, and then warp to the round tower. From there, you take this wire up the pyramid and enter the inverted pyramid. When you enter, you immediately take damage from another cactus, and then use the invincibility frames to get over to this torch, and then burn to death. After that, you get hit by this cactus yet again, and then warp back to the round tower. From here, you roll down and get hit by the final cactus of the run. Then you enter this 2D pipe that's conveniently placed here, and you can get your fifth death animation. Moving onward, you want to roll off the edge and then just let go of your controller and watch Mario sink to a slow and tragic death. Now, if you're a Mario speedrunner like me, you want things to be fast. And today's partner, Mint Mobile, will help with that. You might already know about Mint Mobile if you've seen those ads from Ryan Reynolds. But let me tell you about their awesome services. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless data for as low as $15 a month. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network, and they keep costs low because they sell direct to you online so you don't have to go to salespeople or stores. All the Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, plus lightning fast 5G and free mobile hotspot. And now, for just a special time offer, you can get their unlimited plan, which is normally $30 a month, for just $15 a month. I personally have switched over to the Mint Mobile, and let me just say, it's way better. It's way cheaper than all the wireless services, and you don't even notice a difference. It's just as great. And make sure you guys use the link in my description to get started. 
But after that, you get to spin to pound and try to land directly in this giant hole, which is actually a lot harder to do than you might think. Then you make your way across the ice so you can get squashed by this giant pillar. After that though, Mario apparently has not had enough and he decides to put himself through more pain and just roll off the edge. Really don't know why you do that, Mario. Anyways, we then warp to the floating island and take the painting to Lake Kingdom, the only other kingdom in this run. And in Lake Kingdom, we can get the final two death animations. We exit the painting and immediately make our way to the water. Then we head this way and take damage twice, and then we wait until we die by drowning. After that, we dive into this fish and then wait for him to kill us, and that's time. And for this first run, I actually achieved my goal. I got a 4 minute and 44 second time. Now this run was actually still really bad, and I knew I could do much better. For example, here, I actually got hit by the gushing and died rather than freezing to death. I had to wait and respawn and then die by freezing. And that alone probably wasted like 20 seconds. Then I also didn't do the best movement here and I had to wait for another cycle to get squashed by this thing. Also, my movement all around was absolutely terrible. But this did mean that there'd be lots of time save in the next run. Now, time for a really sad realization. There are actually more people that have done this speed run than I have followers over on Twitch. So please be sure to check out my Twitch channel if you want to see me learn how to do all these different speedruns. So after that last run, I decided to watch the world record again and start up another run. But right before I started the run, someone in my chat told me that I should get rid of all my coins before I start. Which was actually genius. Because when you have coins and you die, there is a small animation that plays and loses a teeny bit of time. And because we die 10 times, the time loss definitely adds up. After I got rid of all my coins, I had started another run. It was going well until I reached the gushing area, and that's when I realized I had collected some coins somewhere. After the run, I checked back and realized that I had collected them from this bush, so I made sure to avoid that next time. After that, we sped through the rest of the run, and I messed up the movement again here and missed the cycle, but it was all good because we were going into Lake Kingdom with good pace. The exiting of this painting and into the water movement was actually really solid, but after that I kind of really messed up. You see this checkpoint? Well, you actually have to touch it so that when you die, you respawn at the checkpoint rather than the painting. Well, the only problem is, is that when you touch the checkpoint, an air bubble comes up. Now, if you're fast enough, you can avoid it, but if you're bad like me, you hit it, and it ends up losing you lots of time because it refills your air tank and then takes a lot longer to die by drowning. Even with those mistakes though, we are still able to achieve a massive personal best of 4 minutes and 14 seconds. Right after that, I started another run and it went pretty well, besides me messing up the cycle here and I kind of choked the ending. But I managed to get a 4 minute and 9 second run. Now at this point, I was 69th in the world, but I didn't want to stop here. I still wanted the sub 4, so I started another run. And it was about the exact same thing, except I ended up with a 407 this time, for just 2 seconds faster. Then I started another run, and I also messed up the cycle here, but believe it or not, I somehow managed to get a 353, which was a massive improvement over the 407, and I actually got the sub 4 minute, and I'd gotten it by 7 seconds. This run would place me around top 40 in the world, and it was a pretty good time. But even though I had reached my goal, I still wasn't happy. I'd only been playing for an hour since I started learning the speedrun, and I knew I could do better. In order to get new personal best, I basically just had to not mess up at all and go really quickly. So I started grinding out runs, and after about 30 minutes, I'd finally got the cycle. Now I just had to not choke. And for once in my life, I didn't choke, and I got a 3.45 which I was extremely happy with as it would place me at 26 in the world. This run was really good as I had pretty much no mistakes. For some reason, I still thought I could do a little better. So the grind began. I completed run after run, but none of them were a personal best. I had gotten two 347s, three 346s, and three 345s. 
my run was already very good, so it would be really difficult to save time. The only time save there was was pretty much just time save from like really tiny things. Things like taking straighter lines and having faster spin pounds. And for that reason, I just could not seem to get a personal best. But I kept at it. I never backed down and I never gave up. And finally, after an hour and a half, I got this run. I had finally gotten a time I was happy with, and I decided to submit it to the leaderboards. They retimed it, and it turns out, it was actually a 342 instead of a 343. That placed me at 20th in the world. I was very content with this run as I had no mistakes and I felt that my movement was very fast. But to be honest, I don't know how the world record is a whole 7 seconds faster than my run. Like I feel like I did just about exactly as they did. And I can't really see a way how they saved a whole 7 seconds. But anyways, if you guys want to see the full run, uh, I'll put the link in the description. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.